Hello and welcome to the Field Journal. Now you may have seen me over at office hours, but today I get to be the special guest on the Field Journal. Uh, the reason I'm here today is because we're going to be talking about a, a common question for us here at Salona, which is uh, networking engineers, particularly Wi-Fi guys and gals, uh, that are familiar with that environment, that networking um, framework, often ask, well, what's the difference? You know, what does CBRS give us that Wi-Fi doesn't necessarily fully give us, or how can the two work together? And I think we need to go to the expert here, and it's definitely not me. So with that, Andrew Vanage, it's your channel, it's your show, and this is your topic. So maybe you can dive deep on this one. Sure. Thanks, Greg. I'd love to cover this topic. So if you're a Wi-Fi engineer or you're working in the, the enterprise networking space and uh, you're coming from that background and that frame of reference, I wanted to just provide uh, a couple of introductory um, value uh, statements for what CBRS and what private LTE provides uh, in parallel to maybe how you understand Wi-Fi to operate and maybe what some of the differences are in, in some of these uh, aspects of the two different technologies. And so I think one of the very first things that is apparent when you start dipping your toe into private LTE and 5G is that the coverage at rate and range is quite a bit higher compared to Wi-Fi. Um, and I also wanna talk about spectral efficiency. So on the first of these two topics, um, coverage rate and range uh, it is about three to four times larger of a coverage area for private LTE indoors and upwards of 10X or more coverage range outdoors. And there's a couple of reasons for this. Um, the most notable or easiest uh, to, to understand at first is for outdoor deployments, uh, private LTE and the CBRS spectrum band specifically can operate at much higher power output than uh, Wi-Fi does. So uh, it can operate at up to 47 dBm EIRP. So that's total output power with uh, the transmitter and the antenna included. Uh, and that's up to 50 watts of power for every 10 megahertz uh, of spectrum. And so that's a much higher power output than the typical one watt output power of a Wi-Fi base station. Uh, and that can provide very large coverage areas for campus environments, municipalities, uh, shipping and rail yards, and the like. So that's the, the very first point is the higher output power on the category B CBSDs, as they're called in CBRS, for outdoor deployments. The second big uh, reason why coverage and range is better in private LTE is how LTE uses OFDMA as a signaling uh, protocol uh, different than Wi-Fi does. So OFDMA in Wi-Fi uh, still allocates the entire 20 megahertz uh, or larger channel for control and management planes. And so the client receiver actually has to listen to all of that spectrum and the resulting noise floor uh, is dependent on that spectral bandwidth for the channel. Whereas in private LTE and 5G in the CBRS band, um, the control and information is carried in much smaller tones, as we call them, or 15 kilohertz subcarriers. So the, the difference there is that the, the client device can be much farther, much weaker signal quality from the base station and still receive that control information from the base station. Uh, the, the thermal noise floor on a private LTE device is somewhere around negative 132 dBm. And given uh, you know, a typical design with 20 to 25 dB of SINR, or signal to interference and noise ratio, uh, client devices can actually um, get connected at a much lower signal uh, strength, but still an adequate SINR uh, compared to Wi-Fi. So whereas we might design a Wi-Fi network for MEG 65 to MEG 80 dBm for capacity to coverage, um, we might design a private LTE network for MEG 95 all the way down to MEG 110 to MEG 120 dBm um, for capacity versus coverage. So OFDMA is leveraged by both protocols uh, or both technologies, but is uh, implemented completely differently. Um, third is that um, the Wi-Fi clients in, uh, in, in their ecosystem transmit at typically lower power output than private LTE clients. So LTE clients may transmit at upwards of 24 dBm um, output power, which is typically much higher than Wi-Fi clients. So that allows them to communicate back to the base station at much further distances as well. And then the second uh, brief topic to cover today was spectral efficiency of, of private LTE. So private LTE 
um, handles interference much differently than a Wi-Fi network, which can lead to better spectral efficiency, especially for dense network deployments where there are a lot of clients or a lot of access points in the environment. Uh, and the reason for this is that LTE uses what's called intercell interference coordination. And this allows for universal frequency reuse where all base stations could be operated on the same frequency and coordinate with each other on um, frequency reuse and scheduling of traffic if they needed to. Now in CBRS, we do have 150 megahertz and that allows us to use upwards of seven channels uh, given a 20 megahertz carrier. So they don't have to use the same frequency, but they could if, they, if we needed to. And ICIC or that interference, uh, intercell interference coordination happens by the base stations coordinating on the back end the timing of when each base station will transmit to its own clients to avoid uh, what we call collisions. So uh, LTE is a little bit uh, different in how it schedules traffic to avoid collisions. And even if they do need to schedule at the same time, let's say there's a large amount of traffic going on, uh, then they can also transmit at the same time and just perceive one another as noise or uh, impact the noise floor. You may raise the noise floor a little bit and decrease the modulation, um, but you can still increase capacity in an LTE network by layering in additional base stations or access points, even if they're on the same frequency or channel. And so that's how LTE achieves universal frequency reuse and provides very high spectral efficiency. So those are some two of the, the key topics, just to recap, better coverage and range by private LTE, and then better spectral efficiency for those dense environments. Fantastic. So you covered uh, um, uh, coverage and range, um, but also there's more videos to come. I think we need to still talk about predictable performance and uh, QoS, uh, and also need to talk about uh, seamless mobility and roaming. Uh, two of those topics, both those things, uh, come up quite often. And I think between them, they're the trifecta of the, the questions and the answers that most Wi-Fi folks are looking for as they come and dip their toe into the CBS waters. So thank you, Andrew, for your time. Thank you for your information. And hopefully, all of you watching will stick with us for the next episode. Until then, we'll talk to you later.